Well, hello, that's me again. Today is February 11th, it is Saturday, and this is some food for thought for you. And this is very important. And I'm not talking about the situation on the uh, front in um, Ukraine and all those hysterical uh, reactions of many that, ooh, American special forces might be uh, deployed there. Okay, they will be deployed there, they will die the same as anybody else there. I mean, this whole, um, if you go to uh, Larry Johnson's uh, blog, uh, you will read there about the situation with the special forces and that they are specifically called special forces for a reason that they do uh, and conduct special operations, but they will have very little uh, influence or uh, basically relevance to the situation which is happening right now around Bakhmut, Artyomovsk and other places where, again, daily it's it, it just slaughter out there, so I'm not gonna go there because I'm sick and tired uh, d d describing all those moves. And yesterday, everybody knows there was another 24 hours long uh, launches of salvos of Russian cruise missiles, which we all know Russians ran out of cruise missiles already, what, for 11 months now. And the blowing out of the transportation and energy uh, and uh, military industrial Remainder, uh, remainder of the military industrial infrastructure of Ukraine and everybody again gets excited and oh my god it's big you know offensive is coming listen it will come when it's ne needed just calm down I mean the idea behind this is very simple it's basically calling of the mobilization of potential not only of Ukraine but NATO as a whole and we'll stop on that but I want to start uh, today and this was the main reason I uh, doing this on this Saturday because of that. Uh, if you uh, um, take a look at this uh, this week uh, headline, here it is. It's actually two days ago. SpaceX limits military use of Starlink for Ukraine. And everybody immediately gets excited because obviously for many people who are part of the Elon Musk's cult, or sect, if you wish, all those people like it's like Johnstown makes very little difference. Uh, they really get excited when anything goes around, uh, you know, anything touches uh, 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 any subject which has Musk written on it. And I want to point out immediately, unlike this failed Tesla uh, and all other uh, actually um, uh, undertakings, if you wish, of Elon Musk, SpaceX, which is also NASA, it only uh, eighth graders believe that SpaceX is not NASA, but what what do I know? Uh, SpaceX, and namely Starlink, which is the system of their um, satellites, uh, is working actually. And he, look what SpaceX states. Uh, uh, SpaceX was really pleased to be able to provide Ukraine connectivity, but the technology was neither intended to be weaponized. Uh, immediately at this point, everybody begins to Chimerically laugh because I was laughing like hell. From the get go, Starlink was viewed as the military asset, as any serious uh, uh, satellite uh, constellation would. However, she told this to uh, this uh, whatever vice president or whoever she is that Ukrainians have leveraged Starlink. I hate this stupid word leverage. They used Starlink in ways that were unintentional and not uh, not part of any agreement. And the question is then, what do those people in SpaceX talk about when uh, beginning to express concern that Starlink, which have been used now for what? For half a year as the main uh, method of the communications and command and control communications, uh, uh, well, it's even computers too, which is famous um, uh, C4 <laughs> ISR, that Starlink is effectively communications and ISR asset. Everybody knows that anybody who has any clue about anything about space, they have very clear idea what it is. And it's uh, uh, basically uh, uh, civilian use as the broadband internet is just a by byproduct basically. So, well, the question here is the fact of this thingy. If you look at this thingy, uh, it's called hogweed. It's called Barshevik in Russian. And the hogweed is actually an extremely successful um, detection, tracking, and targeting system precisely against the 
all kinds of the uh, Starlink uh, terminals which are used by the armed forces of Ukraine and by Na NATO advisors and personnel which is in Ukraine. The Hogwit or Barshevik saw the action actually, not even this year. It started to work already in force uh, uh, last year in uh, November, December. And some of uh, uh, articles about this Barshevik thingy begin to pour in Russian uh, internet. And you, you barely will find anything uh, about it in the uh, uh, U.S. or English language internet because nobody wants to uh, 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 inform people about what this Bolshevik does or what this Hogwit does. Well, the Hogwit, together with other electronic warfare means, have been able to completely shut down communications and command and control uh, systems around Bakhmut and other places in Ukraine or former Ukraine. And that's what they uh, write. This article, for example, writes, Bakhmut is out of the reach of Starling, or how Elon Musk burned himself from Barshevik. Well, Bolshevik is the uh, what is called bearing detection uh, range and uh, the direction uh, finder system, which uh, works in the uh, range of 10 kilometers, and it uh, has the sector of the detection of 180 degrees, and it can immediately detect within this uh, so sector or semi-circle, essentially, up to a, uh, 54 uh, uh, starting terminals. Now, of course, I already heard those uh, mostly Ukrainian trolls and all kinds of other trolls from uh, all kinds of the uh, other countries who said, but, but you cannot use, you know, expensive things, you know, like Krasnopol uh, rounds or Iskander at the single, you know, whatever, southern dollars, um, uh, Starlink terminal. People don't understand. Russia doesn't care about Starlink terminals because Russia knows what it is, how it operates and things of this nature. No. The main target are the users of this Starlink, and as was the case with the 72nd Brigade, the all top of it, all command of it, and other units, including the uh, staffs of those brigades who use these Starlink communications, uh, it was the fact that Russia used Iskander cruise missiles, uh, Krasnopol rounds, which were annihilating those people, the users, which are, of course, uh, uh, Ukrainian and NATO uh, military people. That's what it is. Uh, I would say it this way. Uh, the chief of staff and commanding officer of some separate brigade of the armed forces of Ukraine, not to speak uh, of the NATO uh, uh, volunteers, so to speak, and advisors which uh, operate with them, they worth, even those uh, four, five, six people, they worth much more money-wise, so to speak. In fact, is they are priceless, if you wish. When you and you, it's normal to use one Iskander on them, you know, because that's basically decapitates the command and control of the very large uh, tactical unit. And that's what it is. And that's why Ukrainians hate now to be around Starlings, because they are being annihilated in the industrial quantities. And this is the main reason, well, actually one of the main reasons why SpaceX suddenly says, oh yeah, you know what, it's Pentagon, which doesn't keep the end of its uh, bargain, you know, things of this nature. No, 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 no. Pentagon and all this is just excuse. The main thing is, of course, as always, reputation. But if you thought that it's Bolshevik just one of those things, no. Bolshevik has to be viewed against the background of other things. And that thing is, you literally cannot find anything in this, about this. And this is the issue of Russian sphera. What is sphera? Sphera if you look uh, attentively uh, on the 23rd of October 2022, uh, number of the satellites, by the way, all based on Russian uh, uh, elemental base from microprocessors to what have you, and the uh, uh, number of the uh, satellites, for example, like Ganets M, and Ganets M is the, well, if you translate it, it's essentially a messenger, really kind of like this, and uh, SCIF, CTND, which are the part of the federal project sphere, have been delivered to the orbit. And this was the first batch of what uh, is becoming of this project sphere. What is project sphere? Here it is. 
Russia to start deploying in this is 28 October 2020. Two and a half years essentially, Russia to start deploying new cluster of Sphere and next generation satellites from 2021. From 2021, we're beginning to deploy the Sphere multi satellite constellation that will include next generation multi spectrum satellite, Mr. Rogozin, who, who was at that time the chief of the Roscosmos, stated. We are ready to share this information of this, uh, uh, what Sphere will be producing with our partners in the Eurasian Economic Union, the Roscosmos stated. And uh, in June 2000, uh, uh, in June summer 2018, Russia it announced that it plans to launch over 600 communications and Earth remote sensing satellites in the next few years. And guess what it is? Some uh, very uneducated people will say that um, this is Russian Starlink. Well, in some sense, as the uh, capability of, of providing the broadband internet, sure, they have this commonality, but it also will uh, concentrate especially strongly on the North Arctic route and, of course, on the all over, uh, over Eurasian co continent. And here it is now, we're going back to, well, not back, forward to 2022. And here it is. Funding for Russia Sphere program up to 2024 will increase annually. And look what they do here. They already allocated 95 billion rubles. Now, anybody who starts immediately convert this by the uh, rate uh, or exchange rate to the dollar, it's stupid. And thus really need to explain to those stupid correspondents that 95 billion rubles for this program are not 1.4 billion dollars. It is much more in terms of the purchase parity and uh, obviously uh, now that uh, Russian government uh, confirmed its commitment and already provided uh, 95 uh, allocated 95 billion rubles for this program which um, uh, everybody were kind of uh, confused what is going to be the first uh, we have the uh, Rogozin saying 600 satellites then Borisov Yuri Borisov who is now in charge of uh, uh, Roscosmos were, uh, was speaking about initial 128 now Denis Manturov who is the chief of the industry ministry of Russia he uh, basically goes goes back and says, no, 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 it's going to be 600 satellite. And now they say, okay, nine, uh, 95 billion rubles are already there. Another 90, which is the whole program is about 180 billion rubles are coming. And when you look at this, ah, yeah, this is a direct, direct competitor to the Starlings. And unlike all kinds of those uh, other countries, Russia is the real competitor in space. Well, you have to take a look at the space history of the Soviet Union who pioneered all those satellites and space flight, manned space flight and things of this nature. So when you look at this, you be, it becomes very clear what are we talking about and why SpaceX and Starlink suddenly begin to kind of vibrate and begin to, you know, give out those signals that, well, yeah, it's, you know, we wanted it to be uh, uh, peaceful use. Well, you, you didn't. Uh, it was in military use starting from the, uh, half a year ago, at least. Now it is all about reputation and challenge, competition. And what we're talking about reputation, why this is so important, the explanation is extremely simple. Because with the Bolshevik now operating uh, with this uh, very successful against fear, I mean, pardon me, against Starlink, and Starlink being, being wiped out through the number of the uh, terminals, which are byproduct. Russians do not target specifically terminals. They target the people who use those terminals, and those people are uh, Ukrainian and NATO military then suddenly do you want your product to be associated with the uh, armed forces you provided communications which have been defeated three times over and everybody who is not completely brainwashed knows where it is all going with all this situation with special military operation and horrendous losses which are uh, armed forces of Ukraine and NATO, NATO uh, volunteers experiencing now and then of course all of them they use what? Starlink. 
Do you want your technology, as is the case now with all those holy javelins, holy M77, holy M what have you, all those American uh, weaponry which have been completely wiped out from the uh, uh, order of battle of armed forces of Ukraine. Do you want this to be associated with that? No, especially when you look uh, talking about what Eurasian land mass. And guess what? That's the main economy in the world, not not Northern America. And when you talk about the Eurasian land mass and you say, ah, yeah, this Starlink, these are those losers who provided these communications to the army, which have been wiped out three times over. And I mean it literally three times over. Well, you don't want to deal with this. And they are beginning to kind of, you know, abandon the ship. They need to now show that, oh, yeah, you know, well, we were just so naive and peace-loving people. We wanted the civilian use of what is initially uh, basically their military-grade system. And uh, now they have to react to this. And they are not alone. Within Russia, guess what we have? We have this thing, Forbes. Russian Forbes, uh, you see, again, this is not regular Russian uh, uh, um, um, publication, it's Forbes in Russian. And guess what? On the 31st of October 2022, after Russia uh, launches all those satellites, the pilot project of Sphera, they begin to speak about, ah, oh, technological blockade. Will uh, the satellites of the Project Sphere be able to compete with the Starlinks? Aha! Well, Forbes obviously is an American publication, and they publish this in Russia. And guess what they do? Forbes goes and takes uh, starts to ask questions to, and quote, unquote, uh, space specialists. They talk immediately they go and talk to the SR space company. It's private, allegedly uh, space company, Alek Mansurov. And we'll talk about who Alek Mansurov is. And according to Alek Mansurov, uh, according to his word, words, you know, the Skiff D, which is uh, have been assembled before the operation, he talks about that, oh, but we don't know about those components because they need to be bought three, two years in advance uh, uh, ad abroad. And he's talking about the TSMC now in Taiwan doesn't do the... Um, those microchips and things of this nature. Well, obviously, Comrade Mansurov, well, he's a boy, actually. I will show you now in a minute. Uh, he, uh, that's why he was chosen by Forbes to, be, uh, to have his opinions on this issue, because he has no clue what he's talking about. And obviously, he never heard the news that now the all latest GLONASS and other satellites in Russia are fly, uh, flying all completely on 100% Russian-made elemental base, including microchips. And I already addressed this issue before. But who is this uh, uh, specialist expert, Alek Mansurov, who is was talking to uh, this Forbes? Let me show you who Mr. Mansurov is. That's Mr. Mansurov. As you can see yourself, he is a wonderful boy. He is the founder and CEO of the SR Space, this Russian private company, and which uh, basically does the creation of our companies related to the growing demand from the IT sector for data obtained and used via space technologies, blah, 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 blah. So guess what? In his biography, especially a Russian one, it is absolutely amazing how they use all those catchphrases, those catchphrases about synergy, advanced uh, data exchange, all those things which you uh, hear in the uh, American and Western uh, business community, which is primarily produces today nothing. And here it is. He was born in the 26th November 1990. He uh, got his degree from Nitu Misis, which is a, a respectable technological um, university and he graduated the department of the uh, ecological technologies and engineering well it's uh, not exactly pure engineering thing but it definitely has a lot of uh, uh, references to engineering this department and they have such uh, departments there as additive technologies some metallurgy which is a very legitimate very serious engineering degree but 
Another thing which is marked in yellow, of course, is he had his tenure in United States and Massachusetts Institute Technology of Technology and Switzerland. Oh yeah, we know Switzerland is so um, such a massive space uh, uh, nation. So and basically, he all, is all about business. He obviously admires Mr. Marx, uh, Musk, and guess what? He is. Uh, he was teaching, guess what he was teaching in one of the Moscow Polytechnical Universities. The subject he was teaching, transfer of technologies and technological entrepreneurship. So he is a new uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Klaus Schwab. He has a degree in some engineering, but he is primarily about business. And guess what? With the exception of one uh, engine for the suborbital flight, his company, which they tested, but they don't produce it, is nothing more than, again, this uh, uh, compiler, so to speak. They uh, 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 contract one or, or other companies and try to place the, their um, contracts and designs there. Uh, they, were created, they wanted to create this stock uh, missile or rocket for the, uh, some kind of 200 or 100 kilogram uh, payload, but of course uh, uh, South Korea, which they were partnered, moved out of this project and now they are stuck and supposedly they transferred this uh, uh, rocket f uh, and uh, launch of this rocket in uh, to 2024. So basically this is not real company, it's some kind of the semi engineering, semi entrepreneurial org, which tries to pretend that they are really so important and they are about to become next Elon Musk. They will not. And that is the issue which many people do not understand. When I say SpaceX uh, uh, is uh, really NASA, they have to understand. Even massive companies as Boeing, they will not have enough resources to really maintain a very serious and extended and expansive space program. It takes a state, it takes nation's main economic, military, scientific, industrial resources to develop those programs. And of course, those things like Jeff Bezos or what's his name, the other dude from Virgin Airline, whatever his name, he he's I don't know, well, you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, the only good thing they have been able to accomplish is a suborbital flight for 15 minutes. That's it. In order for you to go onto the orbit, real orbit, and operate vast constellations of their all kinds of satellites, be them broadband, be them uh, intelligence, be them what have you, you need to have a serious support of the government and you have to have a very large economy. And this is the thing which many people still do not understand. And this is <clears throat> why it is always so funny to see people, those mask cult, thinking that, yeah, sure, he, uh, this Star <coughs> SpaceX and Starlink are just, you know, private initiative. Pentagon has nothing to do with this. Sure, sure. So what can I say? This is the uh, uh, biography of one of the experts in uh, for the Forbes and about Project Sphere and guess why he was chosen, why nobody else, including Mr. Barisa, for example, who is the chief of the Ros Roscosmos and uh, he is a technological genius essentially. Why didn't Forbes uh, talk to Mr. Barisa and people from Roscosmos? They would have been gladly given the interviews. No, they needed this boy who obviously would never be allowed anywhere near serious space program to give this bullshit as an opinion and the kid is not even situationally aware and this is why they are afraid of this sphere project i mean horribly afraid because of course it's a direct competitor to starlink and of course it is competitor specifically on at the gigantic largest market of them all which is eurasian market and guess what Russians have a history, don't they? Much longer and much more successful than any SpaceX in terms of the space flight. And this was the main reason why this whole thing unfolded the way it unfolded. Not only uh, Starlink has been basically blocked on the ground, it is being blocked in the uh, space. And again, it is one thing when you, uh, you know, compete with some kind of uh, third tier uh, 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 nation, uh, this is Russia. 
which led the pioneered space in every single aspect from man flight to uh, interplanetary uh, travel to uh, basically uh, satellites and there you go that's the explanation and it has nothing to do with uh, Starlink and uh, SpaceX suddenly finding themselves uh, too peaceful and too desiring not to have their system used by military it's all baloney but that brings us also to this uh, kind of in conclusion to the situation of the panic and um, uh, well, it's panic, let's put it this way, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, of the West, especially against the background of what is happening right now around Bakhmut and why uh, United States and uh, combined West and Ukraine, obviously, while Ukraine are just merely cannon fodder, cannot uh, basically lose there. But they already lost. Everybody understands this. But look at this. Suddenly, the Times, it's... <laughs> London Times, okay, so it's London, it's Great, or rather United Kingdom, I cannot call it Great Britain anymore. So we have the guy in uh, former MP, conservative MP, former Thatcheroid, it's basically the same type of uh, people like Reaganoids, and the guy evidently is delusional. And Mr. Matthew Perry says, our help for Ukraine has strings attached, and we cannot give him a veto when it comes to the scope of final peace deal. Uh, wait a minute, what the final peace deal he is talking about? You see, he is talking about how uh, Zelensky is hero. Well, if he is hero for a British, I mean, I can only uh, you know express my condolences, especially to this dude from Thatcher cabinet in its time. But he talking about that the West has to have the say in the peace talks. Well. He is, of course, full of shit, as you might expect from any uh, British politician. And let me tell you what this guy uh, is dreaming about. You know, his, this is his wet dream. Matthew Paris is actually, yeah, he is the former MP. He is a lawyer. He, Paris was educated in some kind, whatever the hell, school uh, and some college in South Africa. And he got his law degree and he was a member in, in Cambridge. Now then he won the Paul Mellon Scholarship and studied international relations at Yale University. Which basically he is, if you remove the law degree, he is totally uh, uneducated man. When you know what is being taught uh, in all those uh, uh, basically good old degree meals, be that Oxford or Yale University, uh, I'm not talking about law. Law is a serious profession. And guess what? He, somebody even thought of actually getting him into MI6. Well, yeah, he's a perfect uh, candidate to MI6. Obnoxious, very uneducated, obviously having zero understanding of the military situation. He's having zero understanding of the strategy, having zero understanding uh, understanding of the operational art. And suddenly he says that, yeah, yeah, the final deal is coming, you know. Well, yeah, Russians say we are we can talk to Ukraine. Absolutely. But Mr. Nibenzi already speaking uh, very straightly. And yesterday he spoke again that, well, Ukraine is just puppet, muppet. The real uh, issue here is the United States, and United States cannot go and negotiate any kind of peace settlement yet, at least, until it's completely destroyed in terms of its influence over Europe. And that comes through the means of military, and the United States doesn't have resources to fight it. But obviously many want now to talk about this, because obviously, you know what, the more special military operations continues, the more Europe will be destroyed, and more United States will be destroyed. And for example, if you're talking about military uh, reputation for serious countries, and I'm talking about serious countries, not the ones which United States, Pentagon and CIA and all others twist their hands in buying this uh, primarily military junk uh, from uh, the military industrial complex of the United States. We're talking about serious countries, India, China, Vietnam, you know, you know those large players, obviously Iran, but Iran is a separate case. They see what this whole thing is all about. And they see the reputation of the United States as a geopolitical major player and its military and its technology being blown out to smithereens. And Russians are okay with this. Hey, why shouldn't they be? We know now that, and it's established fact, that basically kill ratio is almost 1 to 15. 
We are looking at horrendous losses of the armed forces of Ukraine. And now they talk about, oh yeah, another thing, almost like the uh, a balloon, Chinese balloon, that, oh yeah, we can send their, you know, special forces. Of course, yeah, they can kill civilians. They can blow some things. They might even kill some officers and soldiers uh, of uh, Russian armed forces. They will be annihilated the same as anybody else there. So there you go. Uh, that's the real war. But evidently those people, including this dude, mil uh, member of parliament, Paris, whatever his name, who write this garbage in times, they do not understand what is happening. Well, actually, maybe they do. They just uh, cannot admit to themselves that you lost, guys, big time. Now it's just the, the matter of how you, in under what uh, conditions you might uh, uh, sign the uh, capitulation, or maybe it will be an unconditional one. And it is only up to Russia to decide. Russians obviously have thus all kinds of the uh, <coughs> impediments and inhibi inhibitors. And if Mr. Paris and the inhibitors primarily, they, they still kind of kill, you know, all those Slavic people. But yeah, but it's already not that important anymore. Well, those those who are Nazis, n Nazis do not know their uh, nationality. So, but Mr. Paris and uh, all those people at Times in London, they want to live vicariously through United States, pretending that they mean something. They mean absolutely nothing because they do not have economic, military, and political power in the real world. And as the case with the Starlink shows, and when you begin to look at the background of it, it becomes even more clear. And this is what I wanted to talk to you about. And you know what? Those who like what I do, please subscribe to my channel. Please support me on Patreon. Buy me coffee or two. And you know what? Guys, have a nice weekend. I'll be talking to you later. Bye-bye.